If you ever thought about purling noise, you probably heard about terrain generations. And that is the main stuff they are actually used for. But there's lots of other uses, like character animations, uh, water, and lots of other stuff. So I'm gonna tell a bit about that today. So this is Pernit Noise. I made a plane from cubes and I'm setting uh, the height as a color for these cubes. And it's just a little script with scale and the variable cube and the size of the plane, which is 50 by 50 now. So yes, that, that is what the Pernit Noise looks like on the scale 6.5 and if you go on the script I'm actually gonna add one thing there we go I quickly added um, so it puts the color on each update so we can actually edit it on the runtime but on the function start I'm, I'm creating the plane so it's basically 50 by 50 plane created here it's pretty basic and here I'm setting the color. So the actual purling noise is the height, which is uh, the position on the purling noise plane is the child transfer position divided by scale and set position divided by scale. And then I'm just setting it as a color. So it looks like this. And now we can actually edit it on real time like this. So scale up and scale down, it works. But I think we want to do a bit more with this because this isn't helping anyone or it might help someone but not us. So let's add a bit of code to this. Here we go. I've added a new variable which is move and then if move is true I'm gonna do for all the cubes I'm gonna set the height which is exactly the same thing as before but this time I'm gonna set it as position y. So let's see what that does. So here we go. You can still scale it, you can do all the other stuff. But let's take move. There we go. It looks like a terrain. So yes, you get, the purling noise is great because it actually creates like bumps like this. So it's great for terrains, it's great for uh, wave animations or anything else that you don't just want to go up and down. You want to go slowly up and then down and up and down again. So it's great for all these purposes. And well, if you want to go slow up and down, it's waves, terrain, maybe animation, maybe like, well, all sorts of stuff. But here I actually made it so it's math round to int and then height times m, which is right here. So now it rolls it to int. Guess what happens now? If you actually know what rounding means, then you probably know. Let's take the move and look at that. It's like Minecraft or some other terrain game. So it's not it's now rounded to int. So it can only be 0, 1, 2, 5, uh, nothing like point or 1 point something. It's just round numbers. So here we go. Look at that. You can make some neat voxel terrains with this only. You can scale it, scale it down. You can scale the height of it. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? So yes, this, this is why Perlin Noise is great. And many people think it's really hard to use in unity but it's actually not the whole purling noise thing is actually just a one function inside math so i'm gonna show you something that i use this for which is in my game let's take a look there we go and look uh, actually the grass is waving and that is made by purling noise so it looks like it's smooth and it looks a bit like the wind is going in the waves, which is cool. And the coolest thing is the water. You can see the surface is nice and wavy and that's made by purling noise. So it's actually like purling noise with only one direction. Okay, I see it's, it looks really cool. So this is what you could use the purling noise for. 
and now I'm actually going to show how you can use it. So over here on the Unity script reference page for Perling Noise, we can see the Perling Noise plane. So the X and Y coordinates you are setting on the function Perling Noise are actually coordinates on this plane. So if we want to make it move, we can just easily add to the X coordinate and it will go, it will go just like this, like my cursor is going. And so yeah, it's really simple. You just pick a coordinate on the plane. And here's the, yeah, all of this. Yeah, this is a, a little thing for bobbing animation with 1D perling noise. So he's using the height and height scale and math perling noise time scale and zero. So he's only moving it on the X axis. So it's going to make a bobbing thing which I'm going to show you how to make in a second. But yes, with purling noise, you can do all sorts of stuff. And it is really cool. So let's take a look at Unity. Uh, there we go. And this is a script, a wave script, which I'm going to do transform that position that Y. So the transform uh, position Y on this block will be math F that purling noise which takes x and y as a float and inside that we're gonna put transform dot position dot x so it's the x position of this object transform that position and z so z position of this object and then we are probably gonna yeah we're gonna add scale it's gonna be time scale Add in time scale for this too. Here we go. Let's actually add the variable scale as and float. It will be one for now. And then, if we actually want to make it bob, we need to add time. So it increases the x. So actually, right here, I'm gonna do it time that time times that but it should actually be plus that so don't put times mark that just put plus okay so time dot time plus and times uh, save it yet and then i'm gonna add the height scale value so that times height scale and i'm actually gonna rename it to high scale right here Height scale. Just float. There we go. And change that to height scale. So let's try it out now. It's, it's not going to move on the first time because I did actually put the times time that time. So it is not going to move anywhere because it's wrong but right here we can see that the height scale works but I'm gonna fix it I'm gonna fix it now I think yep uh, so it's actually plus there you go I spotted it time plus and now it should start moving there you go we can see it's nicely smooth you can increase the scale, height scale of it. And then you can actually put multiple of them side by side. Like this. But now I actually need to change the variables because they are wrong. They don't look cool now. Okay, now let's modify these. And actually that won't work because of course it is time so I need to put it zero point something which I forgot but I think yeah now I remember it. zero point something there we go zero point two looks pretty cool zero point three zero point two and height scale is above that let's duplicate some more of them So you can see here, it looks really cool, the effect. So it's smooth, wavy, looks almost like water.
such as by uh, changing things up a little bit, you could get a really nice smooth water effect through this. Well, of course, this is a bunch of blocks, so if you are making a game, don't do it with a bunch of blocks. Just try to figure out the own way to do it. So this is me just showing how to use purling noise, but you need to actually, you need to do that. Well, you need to code your own script, and make it optimized, and make it look cool. But yeah, now I'm actually gonna make uh, the plane thing. So I'm gonna, gonna make a plane size. Oh, I type I typed it wrong. Oh, oh well, four and var x equals zero. So now I'm just making it so that it creates the fifty by fifty plane of cubes where it this script runs. So it's gonna do this for uh, 50 times and then for each time it's gonna do the set coordinate for 50 times so it's gonna create the nice 50 by 50 plane. And inside this we need instantiate and we need a variable block or cube or whatever you want really doesn't matter. Then vector tree, which will be uh, x, 0 and z. And then just the rotation, which I'm usually just considering that identity. Here you go, so it's not going to rotate at all. And now we actually need to put that as a child object so c equals that and then c dot transform dot parent equals this transform so now that object will be placed as a child for this transform and now we need to make it every child move so four and this is how to get to this for all ch children of the object so for child as transform or it is a transform. There you go. In transform. So this transform. Which I typed wrong again. Form. And that should be in. There you go. So this will do something for all the kids. Or children. So there you go. Uh, and inside this. Child dot transform dot position actually it should be a y but oh well probably gonna fix that so equals this and now we just need to change it so it's child dot transform that position child dot transform that position and child child dot transform there you go and there's probably gonna be a bunch of errors yes let's fix those so it should be int. There we go. Any more errors? Yep. Forgot to double click it. There you go. And it is because it should be positioned that way. There you go. And now we should have a nice plane. And actually un uncomment that so the actual parent object doesn't move. And uncheck the renderer for the parent object, so it's invisible, and then just run the game. Actually, now we need to set the cube as that variable. And there we go. This bunch of moving cubes. And I think I'm going to forget about... No, I'm going to put these wrong way, wrong way around. Yep. So height scale is not 0 0.3. That should be 0 0.3. And this is me just failing at everything. Let's put that as... Yeah, there you go, I remembered. I'm actually looking at this footage now and commenting on it. So yeah, I just figured it out that that was actually the height scale. So that should be about 5. And that should be 0 0.3. So there you go. Just play around with the parameters and look at that. It looks like a waving surface. 
or if I would stop it now, it would look like uh, 2D terrain. So now what can you do with this? Uh, first thing is you can do terrains, blocky terrains or normal terrains. And a really cool thing about this is you can actually like, you can add multiple layers of this, which are different scaled. So it will create like small bumps and then a big bumps and all sorts of stuff. So play around with that, it's really cool. And then you can do water effects, you can do animations, anything that needs to go smoothly up and down. So I just showed you how to use the thing. Now let's go, go ahead and try and play with it yourself and try to get some nice, you no know, nice features like terrains and stuff. So now you probably, I hope you know now how to use the purling noise. If you need any more help with purling noise, just search for other tutorials on YouTube and go to Unity Script Reference. But that's it for now. Bye.